All right, welcome to this episode of the Change Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Tim McBride, and this is a platform where I like to invite influencers, industry leaders, and agents of change, both here locally and nationally, to come on and have a conversation with me and share their stories and hopes to inspire others. Uh, I'm always excited about my, my guests, but this one in particular, because when I moved to this city, I kind of came in with these expectations for myself, kind of a vision that I selfishly had for myself, my family, my business, and and quickly that got kind of pulled away from me. Um, and I believe God works with people in my life. And from the day I arrived here, God put this person in my life. And over the last four years, I've not just found a friend, but I've also found a mentor. And this is someone I pull a lot of inspiration from. And, you know, he does so much in our community. He carries so many titles. And in my opinion, he truly captures the essence of change agent. So I'm really honored to have my friend Andre Wadsworth be here today. Uh, as I said, I've got to know you the last four or five years since relocating from California to Phoenix, and I've just been inspired of what you do and what you represent here in our city through the many channels in which you operate. Um, and in, an, in a time where there's a lot of uncertainty, I really want to focus on kind of what you have built with Impact Church. And I know it's not just you, it's, it's a team, it's a community, but how it started and the power of you just bringing you guys together once a week has turned into something 20 years later that's not just touching clients here in our city and our country, but globally. So Andre, thanks my friend for joining me. If you would, share a little bit about who Andre is, a little bit of your background, and then we'll get into some of the stuff you're working on. Um, born in St. Croix, Virgin Islands, grew up in Miami, uh, went to school, but most of my, uh, everything elementary, middle school, high school in Miami, then went to college in Florida State, Tallahassee, and been out in Arizona for what's going on almost 23 years. And so um, lived lived a lot here already. But uh, yeah, um, you know, I have four kids here. They all go to an awesome school. One's about ready to graduate um, and go off to college, which is weird. Um, uh, you know, I obviously serve on some charity boards um, and also founders and uh, executive uh, at Impact Church, which does a lot of community outreach, um, help start some other churches, and then also have an entrepreneurial side, so I have some different businesses like ice cream. I used to own car dealerships, and now I do I have a commercial truck uh, for business um, delivering um, hazardous materials and um, some technology stuff as well, but uh, um, I feel blessed. You, you never sit still. <laughs> I know. I don't know where you get the energy from, man. Like you said, four daughters yeah. too, on top of it all. Well, I think a lot comes from. I was. I remember I was talking to a gentleman. Uh, he's a past professional athlete, and I was just to you, one of me asked me some things about himself, and I and I said the same thing because it's hard. You know, my career got cut short with injuries. You know, being the third pick overall, and the you know the draft. You, know, you have Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf, and me, and then you know I thought I was going to play 15 years, go to 10 Pro Bowls, and go to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, but you know that cut short. What about a Super Bowl? Right? Yeah, Super Bowl. Right? Well, you only can try to control what you control. If I could stay healthy, I could control that Super Bowl. You know, yeah. it definitely takes a lot of team aspect to get there and be on the right team. But maybe yeah. you never know. Uh, when I got to the Cardinals, we went to the playoffs for the first time in 50 years. And so I felt very prideful on that, that I was part of that and helped with that. But, um, you know, I was talking to him and I was looking at you said, where did I get the energy from? Um, I think when you have a competitive drive and then not only have a competitive drive, but you feel um, that God has a purpose for your life. And, and I've always felt like, you know, you just can't sit around. And, and the result of it, I've seen a lot of great things happen, not sitting around and and then not only is tough, you know, I know a lot of guys have a tough time transitioning from playing professional sports to going into, let's say, the private sector or whatever it is yeah. that they have. Because um, when you're doing something truly that you love, not only from a standpoint of what you worked hard for, but when you're dealing with professional sports, it's also the, it's, it's the exertion of actual the physicality of it that gives a sense of accomplishment as well as playing with the team aspect. And so when that's cut short, a lot of the guys have a tough time transitioning. And I said, just take that same drive, that same passion, that same thing. You might not find exactly what you truly love, but if you 
put everything into it with that same aspect, a lot of great things can come out of it. Absolutely. You know, I think you've heard me share, like, I've tried and experienced a lot of different categories in the industry, which was sport that I felt so few before. Yes. And as I engaged these roles, you know, I, as I'm sharing, like, I found the roles started to define me. Yes. And that becomes a dangerous space. And, Good. Um, when I moved here and my company fell apart, I was lost in a lot of ways. And, and someone says, try real estate. You know, I looked at the role, the title. Like, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this. Like sports has been my driving factor, you know, since I can remember from athletes to team sports to the industry marketing, all of it. And now that I'm in this role, I got to feel the purpose that I never knew was on my heart or meant for me until I took the chance and just trusted that this new platform could be an opportunity yes. for, for great things for you to be a service, right? And that's what I've watched you over the last four years, five years, be as someone of service constantly through every channel that you take on. And you do it with smile, you do it with just confidence and trust that you know you're there to be put others before yourself. I wanted to bring you on here so we could put you, put ourselves in front out with you and help share some of the things you're doing because I think there's a lot of inspiration that people can draw from it. And one of which is what you built with Impact Church. You know, and the idea of just starting something and what that can evolve into is so powerful. And I think right now people need something to kind of have yes. faith in or hope in and trust that by just taking a chance and trying, yes. you don't really realize the potential that can come along. So, so what I'd love for you to kind of talk about is so when you became a member of the Arizona Car, yes. you created a Bible study, right? With yeah. a few team members in 1998. And that just started off with. But you bring a couple guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm stay on track. I know we have time, but I want to segue because you said something so important. I don't want to miss that because I think this could really help your listeners as well. Because you learn along the process is that you know sometimes people when they feel like they're like you said, I didn't want to become a real estate agent. Yeah. Or I didn't want to do it. Now it's hard to say so so much in a corporate job to really you know maneuver because you got to stay in the parameters but when you're doing an entrepreneurial job such as being a salesperson or someone that's you know, real estate yeah you have a real estate broker but you're basically yourself but you made it your own and yeah. so you use that platform make it your own and you didn't realize that you really can make it your own and do the things that were in your heart that were necessary to do so i think a lot of people think well i'm not doing this so i can't do that and so you can make it your own. So I want to make sure that you know that. So, you know, starting that Bible study, you know, I'll just tell you again, I was a rookie. I figure, you know, I, I can't start a Bible study. You know, the guys will listen to me because, you know, you're 22 years old. You know, um, you know, at that time I was the highest paid player on the team. And you got guys that are like 35, 36. And that's not old. So I'm older <laughs> now. But when you're 22, 35, 36, it seems like it's ancient. It's a prime age right now. So, um, but when you go through that, you know, you have those things and you look at that. And I said, well, I won't start it now. I won't start it now. I got to wait till I have about, you know, 10 sacks in the season for the respect. But it's not about that. And that was fear. Fear was holding me back from stepping out. And I said, you know, it was halfway through the season. Uh, with that year, we were called the cardiac cards because we made it to the playoffs, but it was like an up and down season. We played great, played, and then we lose, played great, and we had some nail biters and all the things that happened. I said, you know what? It's not about if I have 10 sacks right now. I'm just going to be open to Bible study. So I had, I had my little computer, my little printer, and I printed out these little invitations, put it on. You know, Pat Tillman was my uh, next to my locker. Oh, wow. And so uh, I put one on his seat, I went around the locker room and put it on all those seats. And um, opened my house up. I, I figured if I have the best food, guys will come. So I think I catered. Um, <laughs> I catered ribs, and I catered uh, uh, Ruth Chris. Nice. And so you know, you, you, the guys were you know, the guys are maybe were on the bubble when we weren't making as much. It's like, well, at least we'll get over there and get some good food. Yeah. And I called one of my good buddies. who's a very good speaker, and he flew absolutely to town. And about nine guys came. I I did it for six thirty. And then seven o'clock eat, and it's six fifty. No one's there. Wow. Seven o'clock. No one's there. Seven ten. All of, seven guys rolled up, and it was amazing. I said, "Why did I wait so long to do this?" Because that first meeting, I saw what it did to people's lives. People, because the point is, none of us have it together. Everybody needs 
uh, an outlet. Everybody needs to, to hear a positive word, something they can, they can resonate with, something that they need. And so that happened. So I opened my house up and, and kept on doing it. And that, so that Bible study grew, I'm assuming. Yes. And it wasn't necessarily the lessons or the people that were there teaching. It was the, the fellowship. Was it was the there. fellowship. It was the sense of uh, safety. A lot of guys that came, so it went on for a couple of years, kept on growing. I had a lot of hockey guys, I had uh, guys that you probably would know. Shane Doan was early on, he would come, Darcy Hortichuk would come. You know, I knew Darcy was probably Darcy was probably 18 at the time, Shane was still a rookie. Him and Andrea just got married. Um, I had guys like Daryl Green come in, AC Green was pre uh speaking. I had some good speakers, and it kept on going. And then by the 2001, there was, you know, one of the speakers said, man, this should be a church. So I had like in a, 200 guys at my house. Wow. And then, because that then we opened it to the wives and girlfriends, a place that the guys felt safe. So that's how it happened. So the conversations, the growth become a church. Was that something you ever envisioned? No, I don't know. No, I can't believe I have one of my titles as executive pastor. I never thought I would. Not that I have any problems in the moral aspect of it, because I don't drink, I don't smoke. I, you know, I was never one of those guys that was crazy. It's just I never saw myself as that. I never saw myself as this, and I don't mind it at all now. Um, but uh, it's amazing when you just make yourself available and don't let fear hold you back. It's it's been, and you know, as you introduced me, I'm not gonna lie to you. When you introduce me, I start getting emotional. I'm being serious because and it's it's and I say, man, it's good that I feel emotional because either when you're young, you're emotional. When you're te- uh, in your 20s, you try to be a little bit tougher, and you figure, you, well, you get callous as you get older. No, I want to still be soft, pliable, and everything means something, and I really do. And regardless of how hard life is and how tough things are, you know, those are the things that you look at, and then when you step out like that. And you do that. It's been a lifeline for me. People say, well, you know, like you said, like, yeah, I met, ran in front of you. I look at it as like when you get out of your own mess and get into someone else's mess, there's so much power in that. And then when you know that and when you see that, it's like it's a mutual thing. It's not just, hey, I'm, you know, helping Tim out. No, Tim's helping me out. And, and you can vouch for that, for the interactions that, that you've helped me out. Did you agree? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've been a lifeline for me. So I just want to make sure you know that as well. I appreciate it. And, you know, <laughs> I love that you say that because I'm such a words of affirmation type of guy. And, you know, in like for my in my relationships with my wife, for example, that's something we learned early on. She was and I was. And the power of just a word that it has on me, and my you know, my heart and my emotions can go a long way. And it's over the years I've just I like to embrace that too. Like mm-hmm. feel those things, and it allows me to want to use words too to kind of serve others and just build real relationships. And that's what you know I've been able to experience with you is you know, from day one. You know when things fell apart, you just put yourself and made yourself available to me, where I could ask questions and feel secure, feel safe. That you know it wasn't my fault necessarily. Mm-hmm. That you know the mistakes that were made are normal. Yes, and, and that there's it wouldn't define my future. Yes. I think that's where I really had a hard time is something that I had put invested too much myself into or had it define me too much when I got stripped away, you know, that spiral. But yes. friends and systems and, and groups like yourself and Impact allowed me to be okay to fall, yes. get back up. And that is what has allowed me to kind of have the confidence to get into real estate and yes. see it as a vehicle, not just to serve a transaction, but serve relationships and community, to create a podcast and have people like you on here to connect and story, inspire others. And I'm just, just grateful for those. Um, but I really want to, you touched on something there, like, you know, fear, and you never know unless you try. You know, we're in a world right now where I think fear is being pushed on us heavily from so many different outlets. And, and that's okay, but I think because of, you know, we get stagnant or, or we pull back in certain aspects of our life, but I think more than ever, we need to be able to lean in. Yes. Just trust that. Whatever it is on our heart, we, should, we gotta go for it. Uh, we gotta take that step. And I love what Impact's done. You know, as Pastor Todd, we spoke a couple months ago about creating the, the Corona Relief Fund mm-hmm. and quickly pivoting and serving the families that you know, had their lives turned upside down. But you guys have never once in the years I've been a member of the church slowed down, mm-hmm. never stood still, always found a way to help. And it 
it's gone beyond just our city. I'm watching the definition work around the world is incredible. So it's for me, I love just knowing where your story started with this and what you've been able to build. And now this silly off of Scottsdale and Thunderbird. I tell me a little bit about now what your emotions are with this building that you create. Every year as I said, especially around Easter, because that's when you have the most attendance, I get very emotional. Um, not because of what's being built. It, it's more of, I'm very thankful to be a part, Got that it. I'm allowed to be a part of it. And, and I'm honored to be a part of it. And it's like, and it's just out of, for lack of better words, obedience and just being there. And like you said, not having that fear and I'm very filled with gratitude with that because it's been such a helpful that it will there's never nothing's ever built without other people without mentors without trials and you said something else uh, that was big is that it's okay it's normal to make mistakes you know I was having teenage daughters they make mistakes and things like that but the thing that I also say this because you make decisions as long as those mistakes are not filled with deception, dishonesty, but has a, is coming from a good place, um, because you're no matter how good you are or whatever you are, you're gonna make mistakes. However, your intentions are, you you know, for being good, you're gonna make mistakes. And so that thing, not being stagnant, not being fearful. And when I say not being fearful. I don't mean reckless. You gotta be responsible. You know what I mean? You have to be responsible. Like, yeah, I want to jump out of a plane, but I'm not a parachute off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'll probably take a couple lessons and understand those things. And yeah. but I would also equate it to um, being on your toes. I think a lot of people stay uh-huh. flat footed. I think like Sarah, like, oh, you're waiting and seeing or you're sitting, but then it's too late because you were flat footed. And I think I think even when you're in a stagnant position, because you're quarantined, (laughs) doesn't mean that you just like wait and see. It's like, hey, start researching. What else can I do? What else if we get out of this or we don't get out of this? Or what can we do so when it's time to move, we can pivot? And the problem is people can't pivot because you have to get up off your, your heels and get on your toes. And then by then it might be too late versus when you're on your toes, you just make a direction. It's almost like I, I equate to, I love that analogy because as a football player, you know, everything is like, if you want to make quick moves, get to the quarterback, do all those different things, you can't be flat footed. Yeah. You have to be on your toes because it's less, less movement that you have, the quicker you can get to your destination and not miss that opportunity that's so big. And so just like a sprinter, yeah. sprinter, when they're in the ball, they're not standing up when they say, oh, Mark, it's set, go. They're not from a dead standstill. They're in position. They're waiting. Yeah. They're waiting for that gun. They're waiting for go. And they're in those blocks and there's no movement and they get to their destination. But if they don't, mm-hmm. if they're standing up, they're left at that. By then, race is over by the time they even yeah. started. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Okay. It's so, a great analogy. Yeah. I think, especially right now, we're, we're being told to we'll stay home, yeah. quarantine, isolate, uh, not go out, whatever it may be. There's still things we can yes. be doing. Like, I love that. Like, yes. on our toes. So, when the door opens and the light turns on, we can move. How many billionaires yeah. have probably been made right now while quarantined because people weren't on their toes when they saw an opportunity? Yeah. Where other people were just either at home, oh, can't go anywhere, you know, stay here and do nothing. Yeah. They always say, what can we do to make better? You know, yeah. from whatever, from masks to shields to other opportunities, whatever you know, you know. People are coming up with stuff because they weren't flat footed. Yeah. And to look at what we have too available to us and use that to our advantage. It doesn't have to be be time, it can be just resources, it can be materials, it can be lots of things that we can use and around us to help, yeah. whether it's ourselves, our family, our communities, things we can keep doing. And I think it's been incredible to watch if you kind of take a moment to look, companies and individuals have not allowed this environment to to limit their potential, yeah. limit their dreams and visions. You know, I keep going back to impact because I just, I love just the, the concept of being a light in a dark world. Yes. That's the, you know, the how it was founded. Yes. The story behind that. Right now it's a dark world, but we can still be lights. Yes. And, and it doesn't have to be at a huge scale. Right. You know, and I just, but it can be, I think, from just an act. And that's yeah. what I love about the stories. You brought 
couple guys over with some food, a message to your fellowship, and now what you've gone through over 20 years. I'd love for you to share a little bit of the story of kind of his, what's taking place last 20 for impact to okay. get to where it is now. And then well, what is it going to become once this huge facility we, is actually opening yeah. up? This well, way? we've done, we've uh, impact when we started uh, softly 2001, 2002 as a church. Pastor Troy Johnson, he was, with, he was actually with a Motown. Uh, he was with Motown as a singer. Um, ended up moving out here to become the lead pastor. And then that result of it, we helped plant several churches, a couple in Mexico City, um, seven total. Uh, Denver, there's actually churches that we've started here locally in Arizona that are not even affiliated with us, two separate other churches, um, Tempe and the East Valley. And then we started churches in Colorado. Um, the Mexico City one was absolutely amazing. We, was, we started out in Chalico. I used to fly there uh, once a month. Uh-huh. Um, a guy that, a good friend of mine named Amir Kazemi, he was a, uh, a Muslim, came to the church constantly with his wife, who was a uh, Christian believer. And about a year later, he gave his life to Christ. Absolutely amazing. He's the Willy Wonka, basically, of Mexico City. So <laughs> I call him the Mexican Peruvian. And so, uh, and so, even all those relationships being part of that, and then um, the pastor that we started with uh, uh, decided to start a church in California and left, and Pastor Travis came along um, and was a huge blessing, a huge blessing. It was He wasn't looking to leave the church he was at. He was, he was already left, and it just, God put it together. And that was very, once again, it was very fearful for him and Natalie because it was a downturn of the economy it was something that like why would he want to take on a church that's going through so much transition not in a great position and he did the result of it impact the church has been exploding i can't remember exactly i think it was 2016 we were one of the fastest growing churches in 2015 in the united states we made it uh, we made it on that list and been looking for the next space and god put us in this space and so we that we're probably somewhere between nine hundred thousand dollars back to the community every year, um, from benevolence funds to different community outreaches, COVID relief funds, to all the different things, and we are well close to seven figures in missions. Um, we help in Nicaragua, we help in Rwanda. Uh, uh, we've you know basically going a lot, obviously Mexico City. Um, so we. Doing a lot more in Africa, I started to do in Africa, but we started a church in Nicaragua now. It's uh, impractical. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, with uh, an awesome man that we went out there when we went out for missions. And so, the sky's the limit. But we're going to be open, we're going to be on our toes, we're going to be ready. God's been unbelievable. Um, Pastor Travis, I love because he's always on his toes too. And he's a uh, same type of guy. We're very similar because both of us. We would have never thought we were going to be pastors. Not that we were renegades, but it's just, yeah. it wasn't our desire. It wasn't on our radar what God had for us. Yeah. And I think just in that story, there were so many highs and lows, right? And I think that's part of the message of this podcast in general is to teach people that the story and appreciating the journey is where your emotions and energy needs to go and, and loving that process because it's never a straight line. And there's going to be zigzags, oh. there's going to be peaks and valleys, and just trusting. So in all of that, in addition to all your other business yeah. ventures that you explore and been successful in, what is it that keeps you consistent through all of it, knowing that it's it's never going to be easy, and knowing that you might not know what the end result will be? Okay. Everybody will always have the easiest question if you're a believer, so all the Bible, God. Yes, that's 100% true. But from a practical sense, it's been my mentors. I've had... Uh, two mentors, one since I was 18, I had a tremendous dad until he passed away. And my mentor is Jacob Baranza out of Lafayette, Louisiana. He's been in my life for everything. If I didn't have him to keep me, you know, through all this, the disappointments, change of careers, everything, um, it would be it would be a rough go. And then Pastor Troy Johnson as well. And so they've been huge on keeping me in. So, it's so, uh, or, you know, the word that you use is consistent, right? Well, my mentor always says this, be consistent 
stable, and strong. Consistent, stable, and strong. So if you can do that, you will always have enough, not only for yourself, but you'll be a, a peak position for everyone else. If you, for your kids, for your family, for your friends, for everybody that's pulling, if you can stay consistent, stable, and strong, regardless of what life throws at you, and it's, you're going to feel some tough times, but uh, make sure you're consistent, stable, and strong. I'm thankful that I haven't had any crazy, weird things in my life as a sense of because I was able, regardless of the outcomes, to stay consistent, stable, and strong. That's good. <laughs> and it's a testament to those words. You live that out. Yeah. Every single every interaction I have, I can see those words as you said them in how you present yourself. It doesn't mean that I don't have tough days. No. It's been, like I tell you, this past week has been tough. <laughs> and that's life, right? I think it's, it's never going to oh, be boy. easy. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the message I think people need to hear, especially right now, because it's so easy to get overwhelmed by the negativity, the fear, the anxieties we're feeling, whether it's from a personal standpoint or a professional standpoint, you know, to stay in those those modes, I think, and just try to be as consistent every day as possible. And be okay. Have have grace with yourself. Have forgiveness with yourself if you're going to yes. stumble, because it's just, it's natural. It's natural. And we have the opportunity to get back up again. And I think mean, I love just the story of a group coming together is now not a building, but a community. A community. It's always about touching, people. It's touching lives all over the world. And it started with an invitation printed on a printer. <laughs> a portable <laughs> printer on a Dell computer yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, with, with sign up AOL. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was it. <laughs> sign up <laughs> AOL. He's <laughs> got mail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. What's on this? Free food. Free food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, I just, I think that's such a great message right now. Just start. Right? Yeah. Just trust in why you're starting it and let the results flow in itself out. Because yeah. there's going to be ups and downs. Trust the process. Trust yourself. Trust your gifts. But in this moment, I'm just grateful for this message to be put out there. I was really excited when you said, yeah, I'll come on. Oh, just be in conversation with you. So, um, like I said, you could, you're more than just a friend of me. You are a mentor. I, I look and watch at how you operate as a father, you know, as, a, as a business professional, as a pastor, and what you do and, and how you do it. Um, it's something we should all pull from because I think we'd be a lot better community if we acted and were as well put together as you are in just relationships and just day to day activity. And I to say this right back to you real quick. You and your wife and your kids, every time I see you, bring me joy. And I mean that seriously. I love seeing you. Yeah. They know you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My three-year-old, they're like, oh, great. <laughs> He's starting to get his first yeah, job. I know. <laughs> you made, you like a slut show. You made an impression. Yeah. And not just my life, my life's life, but all of our yeah. kids. And we're just grateful and blessed to have you yeah. as a friend. So as long as she doesn't take my parking spot in the pickup line, she's starting to do it. Now. <laughs> you told us the <laughs> secret. <laughs> well, yeah, we're gonna keep that between ourselves because it's, it's very, it's critical. That's that critical. Can, <laughs> to be efficient in getting our children to yeah, school. Cool. <laughs> and that's another thing because of your guidance and that we are blessed to know that our kids are in a school that we absolutely love. We didn't know anything about it, but you helped guide us there. So I just thank right. you for for coming on today. I know you're busy and we have a lot of new Jesus. So. I appreciate you taking the time. And if if we could share, you know, a way for people to connect with your connected with impact, just direct them to the church. Is yeah. that what you think is best? Yeah, www.impactchurch.com. I'm not big on social media, but it's my Instagram is Andre as Andre Wadsworth. Um, and so uh, I maybe I should start doing that. So that's the first time I haven't sent a message yet, but I will. Okay. So, but okay. I put that out. All right. So approach him on Instagram. Yes. Challenge, challenge, Ooh, challenge. Like first time. <laughs> hey, you on your toes. Right? I know, your toes. Toes. Yeah, don't be flat footed with this. No, I know. I'm a cord ball. You put it out there. Let's have fun with it. So start tagging Andre Watts with the challenge. Here. So he has to be on top. I'm sure his daughters will love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, some TikTok videos. Oh, yeah. I've been in a couple of those, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm a TikTok famous over here with my daughters. I'm told I have to download it and pull it up in real estate. I don't understand it yet. I'm you know, I'm, I like more traditional like LinkedIn. I don't even know about Facebook anymore, but uh, I gather that's a big platform. Yes, and so, your hair game is tight, so it might work on TikTok. Okay, yeah. <laughs> i got to keep the hair going. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's become a big part of my identity. Let's get on the emotion uh, on your avatar. <laughs> uh, 
Well, and one thing, you know, if you know me, you know that I am a big consumer of hats. Yes. Uh, and I, I respect what hat means from a story standpoint. I've been collecting over the years. And when I got on this show, I wanted to give something as a thank you and a token mm-hmm. of my appreciation for just taking the time to kind of share your story with that. So I have these New Era, which is the brand that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called JJ, because you are a JJ. Uh, so I have a hat here for you. Just to say thank you. Thank uh, you. Just to I keep, like that. Keep being who you are because look at the influence you're having, the reach you're having, and the lives that are being affected and changed for good because you took a chance in 1998 to invite teammates into conversation. So, people, I hope you can take away a little bit from that in your own life um, because you just never know what may come from just taking a leap of faith, okay. being on your toes, and, and starting whatever that may be. So, you know, it's worked for me in real estate and it's working for Andre in a lot of different levels. And uh, I'm just grateful for people in the city. Keep being Andre, keep being yeah. my friend and mentor. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And okay. uh, guys, check out Impact Church, the work they're doing. Cut, pay attention to the new building going up. It's incredible. Uh, they're just going to be able to touch so many more lives here locally and around the country because of online and globally because of this space. So. Uh, it's an honor, my friend. Thanks for joining me today. The hat is yours. Hopefully, it fits. They don't fit my head, but uh, I get the snapbacks. I love them. I'm forward to the shell. But, uh, really appreciate it, my friend. And, uh, you know, God bless. And Thank we'll you. We'll see you out there. All right. All right.